The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this learning session. I'm Paxson Daniel Daniel, computer science teacher. So, we'll begin with the correction of the assignment we had in the previous lesson. The question was, assume that there are 20 people in a room, including yourself. Each person must shake hand one and, and only one time with everyone else in the room. How many handshakes will occur? And so the second question is, if there are n people in the room, how many handshakes will occur? n should be greater than one. Okay, so we will answer the question based on us having 20 people in the room. To apply the first step of problem solving, we have our input, we have input 20 people. Our goal is each person must shake hand with all other. So it means each person must shake hands with all other persons in their room. The resource, we have no resource. The, the constraint is that the constraint is that two individuals must shake hands just once. It means you can't shake under, under person's hands more than once. So each person shake hands one and only one time with all other people. Total number of handshake. First, we recognize the pattern, pattern recognition. We will see that one person does 20 handshake, 20 minus one handshake. It means the first person is going to shake 19 other people. Person two does 20 minus two handshake. That is, the first person greets 19 people. The second person has already been greeted by the first person. So he's going to greet the other, he's going to greet 18 other people. The twentieth person, so the 19th person has already been greeted by 19 people, by 18 people. So he's just, so he won't greet the 18 people, he won't greet the 18 people that already shake his hand. Is going to shake the hand of the last person. So the 19th person is going to shake just one hand. And the, the last person won't shake any hand with 20 minus 20. So from this, we can generate a pattern. From this, the total number of handshake is, there, is therefore going to be 19 plus 18 plus 17 plus 16 plus 15 plus 14 up to. 3 plus 2 plus 1 plus 0, which gives us 190. It means if there are 20 people in the room and each person is supposed to shake the hand of all other people in the room, and a hand and a person can only shake the hand of one from that person just once, there are going to be 190 hand shakes. Now, the situation in which we are not given a number. We are to get the general, we are to get the, we are to get the sum based on generalization. 
So here we are taking n people, n being n should be greater than 1. So the total number of handshakes of n people applying pattern generalization and simplifying, we will see that general formula for n people is going to be, so general formula is going to be the, the, sum, the sum of i from 1 to n minus 1 is going to be n into n minus 1 divided by 2. So if we come back here to first one, we will see that for, let's take our i to be equal to 1. So, so it's going to be the first person would, would do 20 minus 1 handshake. That is, here our n is 20, so it is n minus 1. The next one where our i is 2, the second person where our i is set to 2, is going to be n minus 2. Up to where we have n minus n. At the end of the list, we have n minus n. So coming now here, here now we are applying the concept of abstraction where we are focusing just on essential details. So the formula is going to be n into n minus 1 divided by 2. Our lesson for this session is going to be introduction to our governance. Introduction to our governance. So we we'll start with objectives of we we'll start with objectives of our lesson, proof of knowledge, real life application of our governance, presentation of concept, exercises, and lastly assignment. So the plan for this session is going to be objective, reverse knowledge, regular application of algorithms, presentation of concept, exercises, and lastly, assignment. Objectives. I know at the end of this lesson, you should be able to describe the characteristics of an algorithm, describe ways of representing algorithms, as well as explain the relationship between an algorithm and a computer program. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to dis describe the characteristics of an algorithm, describe ways of representing an algorithm, as well as describe explain the relationship between an algorithm and a computer program. Notions on problem solving is required. So notions on problem solving, that is, that involve computational thinking, is required. So before we get into the actual lesson for this session, we're going to take a look at a real-life application where the concept of algorithms are being applied. Your friend Kim is a great cook, and, she's, and she also loves sharing her recipe with others. She recently learned that a cookie recipe is very similar to an algorithm. She, doesn't, she does not know what an algorithm is, thus can relate it to her cookery recipe. You are expected to, you are expected to describe to your friend Kim what an algorithm is, the characteristics of an algorithm and how algorithms are represented. Use examples from her cookery recipe for her to understand better. So your friend Kim is a very, very good cook, but she wants to share her recipe with others. And she was told she can represent her recipes as an algorithm. But she doesn't know what an algorithm is. She expected, to, I don't know this lesson, you should be able to explain to Kim what an algorithm is, the characteristics of an algorithm, and how she can represent a recipe as an algorithm. Algorithm. What is an algorithm? Algorithm, as we earlier said, is the set of steps the set of well-defined and precise steps which are used to solve a given problem. Computers are machines made up of hardware and software. 
this software controls the hardware by instructing it on what to do. These instructions are controlled in computer. <coughs> No, from here, from here, from here. Hello. You expected to explain to your friend what an algorithm, you expected to explain to Kim what an algorithm is, the construction of an algorithm, and how she can represent her recipe as an algorithm. Notions of algorithms. Computers are machines made up of hardware and software that controls the that made up of hardware and software. The software controls the hardware by instructing it on what to do. These instructions are contained in computer programs, which are algorithms written in another form. An algorithm, as we earlier said, is a set of word, a set of word defined and precise instructions used to solve a problem. It's a step by step method of solving a problem in a finite number of steps. An algorithm is a step by step method of solving a problem in a finite number of steps. The sequence of instruction which, when correctly executed, yield a given result. It's a sequence of instruction which, when correctly executed, yield a given result. It is a series of steps that perform a particular computation task. So, from the three definitions which we have, which we have seen. The first one made mention of finite number of steps. The second made mention of correctly executing it. And the last one have a series of steps. So next we are going to look at characteristics of a good algorithm. We have seen what an algorithm is. We are going to look what are those characteristics, those attributes in which a good, a good algorithm must possess. So we're going to look at precision, no omission, robustness, finiteness, effectiveness, efficiency, uniqueness. Lastly, we have input and output. Precision. Precision. What do you mean by precision? That is, each step should have one and only one meaning. Each step, each set of instru each instructions must have one and only one meaning. No omission. Each instruction should be clearly written or stated. So every, all the instructions, which all the steps or instructions which needs to be executed needs to be clearly stated or written. You can assume that the user or the computer will know that we know what ought to be there. She is supposed to write or state all the instructions. Robustness. A robust algorithm should be able to handle erroneous input or handle error during execution. So the algorithm should be able to handle mistakes made by the user of that algorithm. 
That means if your user makes a mistake, your algorithm should be able to handle that mistake. The algorithm should not stop working because of a mistake. Finiteness. The algorithm must stop after a finite number of instructions are executed. So the algorithm must stop after a finite number of steps or instructions have been executed. Effectiveness. The algorithm should be able to give out the desired output. So your algorithm should be effective. That is, your algorithm should yield the desired output. So you're cutting an algorithm with the sole aim of solving the problem, that is to get a desired solution. At the end of that algorithm, at, at the end of the instruction or the instruction or the steps, the algorithm should give out the desired output. If the output is not the output you desire, it means the algorithm is not a good algorithm. Efficiency. The algorithm should be able to produce a solution within a reasonable amount of time. The algorithm should be able to produce a solution within a reasonable amount of time. Uniqueness. Uniqueness. Results of each step are uniquely defined and only depend on the output, on the input, and the result of the preceding steps. So the result of each step are unique, are uniquely defined. The result of each step are uniquely defined and should only depend on the input and the result of the preceding steps. Input and output. Our community algorithm should be able to accept input and produce output. Our algorithm may not receive any input as it may receive more than one. However, it must produce at least one output. That is, your algorithm must, an algorithm must not receive an input, but, and it can receive more than one input, but it must, however, produce an output. That is its solution. Link between algorithm and program. What is the link between an algorithm and a computer program? A program is an algorithm which is written in a programming language. A program is an algorithm which is written in a programming language. Algorithms are written algorithms are written independent of programming language. That is, an algorithm can be written without using a programming language. But to implement a program, to create a program, we need to write that algorithm in a programming language. Algorithms cannot be executed by computer without being translated into a program. A human can look at an algorithm, a piece of paper, or the computer screen and understand it, but the computer, in order for the computer to understand and implement that algorithm, it needs to be translated into a program written with a programming language. How are algorithms represented? An algorithm can be represented using two main methods. Okay, that is a flowchart or a sorting code. Flowchart or a sorting code. Flowchart. A flowchart is a graphical representation of an algorithm. A flowchart is a graphical representation of an algorithm. It's a diagram which visually, which visually presents the flow of data through processing systems. It's a diagram which visually presents the flow of data through processing systems. So as Ernest said, 
A flow chart can calculate the function of an algorithm, but how do we do that? How do we visually describe the flow of data in a processing system? So there are symbols which we can use to demonstrate to describe the flow of data within a system. First, we have a rectangle, which is used to represent process. We have a rectangle, which is used to represent process. Then we use this symbol to represent input and output. The diamond symbol is used to represent decision. That is, at this point, we have a decision. What, if you are to decide between two tasks, we use this diamond symbol to represent decision. A cycle, a circle is used as a connector. We used to connect, we used to connect a page, which have, we used to connect two separate flow charts. Then this is for, Terminals that we use this to represent the beginning and the end of our flowchart. Then the arrows are used as flow line to show the direction of flows. Example of a flow example of an algorithm which has been represented using a flowchart. To find the area of a circle of reduced arrow. We know that the sucks for the the area of a circle is given by pi radius squared to pi times radius times radius. So with this symbol, which is used as a terminal to represent the beginning and end of an algorithm, we use this, we state start. This is used to receive input. So we read arrow, that is, we read the radius, which has to be given. The rectangle is used to represent processing. So our area is equal to 3.14, which is the value of pi times r times r. That is pi radio square. And lastly, we print out our area. This symbol is used for input as well as output. So we receive here we get input as r, and here we print out our area. Then we end our algorithm. So the code. So the code. It is the representation of an algorithm using combination of natural language. So surgical code is simply a representation of an algorithm using a combination of natural languages. So you can do an algorithm using natural language being English, French, Spanish, Chinese, or whatever natural language you deem fit. Example of surgical code. For so example, of surgical code. So here we have read principal p time t rate which is r next calculate the interest i as i is equals to principal times time times rate divided by 100 and we display the interest i so here this is an algorithm to get the simple interest to get the simple interest of a business so we read our principal that is our invest our principal our capital, the time, and the rate. So we get the simple interest on a loan, or in particular on money, or on money. So we read, calculate, and we display. So with this, we are presenting this algorithm using natural language. Exercise one. What? So here, write an algorithm that reads two numbers and find their sum. Write an algorithm that reads two numbers and find their sum. At this point, we have to represent it using the study code. So here, what inputs do we need? Here we need input and our expected output. Our input is the two numbers which we are supposed to add. So we have first num one and second num two, that is the first number and the second number. Expected output is the sum of the two numbers. Our expected output is the sum of the two numbers. Example of such a code. For example, it's an example. 
I'll say how is the sum of the two numbers. So, uh, I'll go with him. Here first, step one is we start. Step two, we read the first number as we get the first number. Then we get the second number. Our sum is equal to num one plus num two, that is number one plus number two. And after we've gotten the sum, we print out the sum. Then we end. The next, so the next exercise is write an algorithm to convert temperature from Fahrenheit to Celsius. Write an algorithm to convert temperature from Fahrenheit to Celsius. At this point, our input is temperatures in Fahrenheit, whereas our expected output should be that same temperature, but now it should be in degree Celsius. So here we start. The next, after we start the algorithm, we are supposed to read the temperature in degree Fahrenheit. After we read the temperature in degree Fahrenheit to convert to Celsius, we multiply, we take 5 divided by 9 times our temperature in degree Fahrenheit. Then we print out the temperature in Celsius. So to better understand all what we have done, we are going to take a look at an example. We are going to have some attacks which we ought to do. Write an algorithm that describes what you do from when you wake up to the time you get to school. Write an algorithm that describes what you do from the time you wake up See the time you get to school. Ensure that your algorithm meets at least four of the characteristics mentioned in the lesson. So make sure that your algorithm meets at least four of the characteristics mentioned in this learning session. In order for this lesson to be prepared, the following resources were referenced. Our next lesson is going to be on algorithmic instructions. Una tege si ma tege yop, una tege minga ma tege nyum, una tege majang ma tege ndom, ma ne tambia niña ne injubia yen, ngani bana ma tege mut, ngani la kiri wa tege ndom, esa kina bia jinki do, ma ne tambia niña ne injubia yen, Tam tama mote tam zabike, tam tama tonge tam zabike, tam tam tama mote tam zabike, mane tambia niña ne injo biayen.